She's here with Myra. We're going to be working on some of her, her healing and her sits and downs and just work on stability in these commands, keeping her a little bit more relaxed because right now she's kind of explosive with a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of frantic energy behind it. And so we're just going to work on getting her into a little bit more of a calm mindset and then again work on some of those stationary commands, um, some stability stuff and maybe even some place commands and stuff as well, keeping her nice and relaxed in the process of that um, and relatively calm. So we're gonna give her a heal command. We're basically, we're gonna heal around the room with her to start with. So we're gonna say heal, begin walking, and any attempts to, ver to, to deviate off out of that heal command, we're gonna give a no and a correction on knee collar, and then we can repeat the heal command if we need to to get her back into that position. My left heal. And so this is our heel position right here beside the left leg. Good. And we want to make sure she's not rushing ahead. And if she starts to get ahead, I'm going to mark that with the no and give a correction, guiding her back with that leash as well. Yeah. Much better with this already. Before we started the camera, we did a little bit of this work with her. She's quite frantic. Okay. Sit. Good. Can we give affection there, making sure she's not getting overly excited, breaking the command? She kind of tried to lick at my hand there, and even that I don't want her necessarily doing. I don't want her to just impulsively react by trying to put her tongue in my hand. In these situations, some dogs you'll see as soon as you say good, you're going to pet them or give them food, they'll break the command and get overly excited. And those are all opportunities for us to correct that, right? Good. Good. Her, nope, giving her a correction there. Now a correction, she's supposed to stay in that command there. Uh, just because I said good does not mean that she can move towards me. We're breaking that command. And she put herself in a down. It's honestly not a big deal. If I want her back in the sit, I can just say, all right, sit. Sit. Good girl. Just shuffle in her a little bit as needed there to get her into that sit. Um, I shouldn't have repeated the command there, but learning that down into the sit there, so still a bit of a learning curve there for her. Heel. Giving that heel command. And she's doing really well with this. She's very attuned with this on this. So this is good. Heel. And stop having sit again. Myra, sit. Good. Drop that leash, move around her. Still don't want her to jump on me, get overly excited. Good girl. Still some rules for that break command, depending on the situation. Good girl. Yep. Good. Yep. Myra, down. Nope. Down. Good girl. So again, nope, and tap the knee collar. And then we're keeping the command. I said down, she went into a sit. So then I said no, tap the lead collar, and put her into a down.
times to go for. I'm going to say no to the correction. No. No. Good. Okay, so I gave a no and a correction to Teresa went and passed quite the toy. And now on the second pass, then you can see she's now not moving towards it. You might even see her make a bubble around it. Good girl. Very good choices. We can mark that with that. Our good plan. Our good mark. Good. No. Yeah. Oh, good girl. You do these exercises to absolutely use some food or something to uh, reinforce the, the dog meeting these uh, these items. So what I would do typically then would be if I had my food couch on me, we would uh, we would mark the good and then give her a piece of food, a reward from myself, something different than what's on the floor. So if I was using toys for this, I wouldn't be using toys as my reward myself. But anyway, that's how I like to do this exercise. With Maya, we're not using any food at the moment. We're just using our affection for her in this case. Um, so we can work on her excitement level with that as well. Um, but absolutely use some food the first few times you do this or whatever um, with your dog to keep it uh, to keep it kind of fair and motivating. But again, use something different than what you're using on the ground. So if you're using toys, don't use a toy as a reward. Use something, some piece of food, high value food, a beef liver or you can just use their kibble if they find that valuable. Um, but uh, if you're using food for these exercises, which we do like to use food for these exercises, high value food item on the ground, have an al a different and alternative food, high value food item on you. So again, if there's maybe um, you know, lunch meat or something on the ground for this exercise that they can't have, you have beef liver in your pocket, and every time they leave that toy, you're gonna say good and reward them with one of those toys. Nope. Uh, nope. Nope. Take my note and a correction. Uh, so a mistake a lot of people make, they'll use all these toys and stuff this exercise, and then at the end of the exercise, they'll release the dog to the toys or to again another toy that they have. And uh, I, I guess they just say the wrong impression there with what these exercises are supposed to resemble, which is when I say no and correct, then it's don't go for that at all, right? It's not like, you know. In this situation, I don't want her to think that she's gonna, at the end of this exercise, get access to all of these toys. That might cause some anxiety, it might cause a little bit of increased excitement with the exercise, which is not what I want. I want her to realize that these items are not for her, they're for me right now, and what she needs to be doing is following along with me, sit. Good girl, and paying attention to me. Good girl. Yep. Nice. That's a good little exercise there with our no command, teaching the dog to leave the items on the ground and defer to us for those items.